Hi guys, uh, let's talk about how to fly, find the centroid of a complex shape. And by complex, we don't mean like difficult or ridiculously um, uh, a tough to figure out. We're really just saying complex means it's more than one shape that's put together. So for instance, uh, we're gonna discover two ways that we can do it. This first video is gonna be the addition method. In the next video, I'll show you the subtractive method, okay? Uh, both ways are fairly simple, not a whole lot of work either way. Uh, but the idea is this. Uh, whenever we have a complex shape, so that's not just a regular geometry shape like a rectangle or a square or a triangle, it's, it's really multiple shapes put together, let's divide it first up into those smaller shapes. So we have here uh, a shape that is six units tall at the three unit mark is whenever this bend starts, and then it's six units wide, and at the three unit mark is when the bend starts this direction, right? So um, let's go ahead and just break this up. And so if I look at it like this, not as a complex shape, but maybe perhaps as a rectangle. Maybe time for a new pen, okay. A rectangle and a square and a triangle. Um, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier to comprehend. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the centroid of each of these individual shapes by themselves. I'm gonna need X, Y coordinates. Uh, rectangles, those are easy, right? The rectangle, it's gonna be right here in the center, right? And so there's the centroid of the first shape. I need the XY coordinates of that shape. Um, that would be an X coordinate of three. And then for rectangles, it's halfway, right? Halfway over, halfway up. So three, 1.5. So I need, I'm gonna call this the area of, uh, we'll call that area one, okay? Just cause we wanna give it a name, okay? And area one um, has an XY coordinate of three, 1.5, okay? Let's do the same thing up here, the square very easy, right? The square, it's right in the center. And so I know that, uh, let's see, the square is three units wide, so it'd be 1.5 over from the left, and then it'd be an additional 1.5 up from this three line, so really it's a height of 4.5 overall, right? So we'll call this area two, just to give it a name. And so area two here, the centroid will be located at 1.5 and 4.5. And then we have the triangle. And triangles, we remember from notes that it's a third of the way, right? A third of the way from the big end. So as far as left to right goes, if, if I broke this up into thirds, it would really go, uh, here's the next corner of three, and then four, and then five, and then six, right? So there's your thirds. And uh, which third do I take? Well, it's shaded, obviously. There's more to the left than there is to the right. So it's the x coordinate is going to be right here along this line of four. Let's call this area three, by the way, just to give it a name. So area three, as far as the X coordinate goes, there's three, and then it's over at four, right? And as far as up or down goes, if I broke this again into thirds, here's the next coordinate of three, then I'd have four and then five and then six, right? There's my thirds. There's more towards the bottom than there is towards the top, so it'd be the X coordinate of four right here. So, I mean, I'm just ballparking it. My X, Y coordinates are probably not located pictorially in the correct place, but I know that it's at four, four. Okay, so we've done like 90% of the work so far. Um, well, maybe not. We've done 50% of the work so far. The problem now is this. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to find a weighted average of each of the X coordinates and a weighted average of the Y coordinates. And what I mean by that is this. If I took the three X coordinates of three, 1.5 and four, and I added them up and divided by three, I would find an average of the three numbers. And that's all fine and dandy, except that this rectangle is so much bigger than the square, which is so much bigger than the triangle, right? And so the amount of space that we're talking about is different, and therefore this centroid, which is for a bigger shape, needs to pull more weight than this centroid, which needs to pull more weight than this centroid, right? And so um, how do I do that? Well, I get the area of each shape involved. And so let's go through and let's talk about, so we've got the X and the Y, right? We got the XY coordinate for the centroid, okay? Let's talk about the actual area for each of these areas, one, two, and three. This is a rectangle. The area of the rectangle is base times height, which is six times three, which is 18. This is a square. In fact, it's a three by three square. And so the area of that shape is nine. And then this is a triangle, and for triangles, it's one half base times height, it's a three, by three triangle, right? Three times three is nine, and half of that is 4.5. So what I do is this. Instead of just adding the three numbers up, 
and dividing by 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 3 and I'm going to multiply it by its area of 18. I'm going to take the 1.5, notice I'm doing just the x-coordinates, right? I'm going to multiply it by the 9. I'm going to take the 4, I'm going to multiply it by the 4.5. And what that does is now it takes into account that that 3 pulls a lot more weight than the 1.5 one does, and both of those pull a lot more weight than the 4. If I add those up and I divide by the total area of the shape, okay, the total area of this entire shape would be 18 plus 9 plus 4.5, and that's going to give me, oh, sorry, my lights went off, just a second. There we go. If I divide by the total area, then that gives me the x coordinate that I'm looking for. So what is then 3 times 18? Really? My calculator not going to work here? Oh, there's an on button. Haha. <laughs> okay, 3 times 18 is 54. 1.5 times 9 is 13.5. And 4 times 4.5 is 18. I'm going to add the three weighted values up. I'm going to divide by the total area. 18 plus 9 plus 4.5. The total area of the shape is 31.5. Okay, so again, weighted x's over total area. So, 54 plus 13.5 plus 18 adds up to 85.5. I'm going to divide that by 31.5, and that gives me an average x coordinate of 2.71. So now, when I talk about the centroid for the shape as a whole, the complex shape, not each individual piece, but if I put all three parts together, the x coordinate is going to be 2.71, which is just slightly left of center. It's going to be somewhere like right around here, right? There's about 2.71-ish. Now I need to do the same thing with the y's, okay? The three y coordinates I have are 1.5, 4.5, and 4, but this y coordinate should pull more weight than this one, which should pull more weight than this one, right? So how do I do that? I take into account the areas. So now it's going to be the weighted y over the total area, again, total area we already got it's 31.5 right we already did that in the first shape so now let's go through the 1.5 has an area of 18 attached to it the 4.5 has an area of 9 and the 4 has an area of 4.5 let's go through and just do the math ready 1.5 times 18 is 27 4.5 times 9 is 40.5. And 4 times 4.5, we actually did that in the last one, it's 18. And so, we're almost done. 40.5 plus 27 plus 18 gives us a grand total of 85.5 over 31.5. And it turns out, well, it looks like we just did that one. Is that 27.2.71 again? It is. Another 2.71. So the average y coordinate is 2.71. So here's 3. It's just slightly lower than that right here. And so the overall centroid for the shape is going to be somewhere in this ballpark. That is the method of addition when you take small shapes and add them up. You add the weighted averages, right, method of addition, add the weighted averages, and divide by the total area. So in the next video, if you like that, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes that doesn't really work, okay? And so what I'm going to do is in a second video, I'm going to show you a different way to get the exact same answer, and you might actually like it better because I think it's less work.